All right. This is the No Set Path Podcast. I'm your host, Drew English. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Thanks for being here, and I hope you enjoy the ride. Today is our first in-studio episode. I'm trying as much as possible to have guests come in and speak with me live here in the space. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the studio set up behind me. They're a lot of fun. I really enjoy them, and I'm putting these long-form videos up on YouTube. Today's guest is Taylor Dederick. Taylor runs Unless Media, which is a marketing and social media firm here in the Hudson Valley. Taylor is awesome. She totally knows what she's doing. She's super fun to talk to. I really enjoyed this conversation, and there's so many great little tidbits that anybody listening who's working for themselves, running their own business, solo or with a partner, could totally pull out and use in their day-to-day. So I'm not going to hold this up any longer. I really enjoyed our conversation. Without any further delay, here's my interview with Taylor of Unless Media. I was thinking, you know, in my lack of preparation, I was just thinking of like easy stuff, softball stuff before you got here. And I was trying to remember how we actually met. Do you mm-hmm. remember? I do. Okay, tell um, me, because I'm I'm And I fooled. remember, because I think about it kind of often, because it's like that one moment in business where I'm like, holy crap. Okay. Um, It was at the one Hudsey mashup down at the Strand, on the Strand oh, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. Old Savannah. And I was standing next to, I think it was either JP or Devin of Hudson Valley Visuals. Uh-huh. And I was talking with them and you had come up and you like introduced yourself and you're like, are you Taylor from Unless Media? And yeah. I was like, you're like, Oh, I follow you on Instagram. And to me, in that moment, I was like, oh my God, how did somebody recognize me from social media? It was like this, like, uh, I guess like that famous moment where I was like, wow, I feel like a superstar. <laughs> well, I think it's an indication that you're doing your job mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Because 100%. isn't the whole point to like put, I mean, so how would you, let's start there. Mm-hmm. Let's start with Unless Media. Yeah. So what is, what is Unless Media yeah. just for people listening? And then I think, I guess through that answer, it's like, what would you classify mm-hmm. yourself as professionally? Mm-hmm. Like what's, what's, what's your yeah. job? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I started on less media as a social media management, kind of like side hustle freelancing gig. And it's now grown into what I consider a creative marketing studio. Um, I don't love the term agency. That's a whole topic I can get into. Me too. Um, but I, I work with businesses on their marketing strategies and on social media management and content creation, paid ads, email marketing, the whole nine yards when it comes to digital marketing. Um, and I just do it in a more creative way. I like to kind of do it in a way that's inspiring or fun. That's why I work with a lot of local fun businesses or even not necessarily local, but just super small or thought provoking businesses that uh, have a have a meaning that are on a mission for something versus just, you know, the everyday corporate company. Um, and it had started, you know, as a side hustle, as this freelancing gig, because I was working corporate uh, in a, as a marketing specialist and I hated it. I hated the corporate life. Um, I mean, we all have been there the nine to fives <laughs> and I, I hated the whole lack of creativity and, you know, OK, I create something for the company for marketing purposes. It gets passed down to 17 people. They all have their input on it. It gets back to me. It's completely irreversed. It completely changed everything I had originally planned for it. I have to kind of like go back. Nothing about it was fun. It, it was really draining. I was super burnt out. Um, so I'd started doing it freelancing on the side, just from some businesses that I was friends with personally, um, and didn't really think anything of it other than it being a creative outlet. And then one day I randomly on TikTok, actually, I think I had saw a video that someone had made and it was basically like, POV, you quit your nine to five and become a social media manager. And I didn't really realize that there was this whole like industry or like this niche on social media of these social media managers um, until that moment. And so I started looking into it and diving into it and I had just learned so much and I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I want to do. So I ended up starting an Instagram account for it, kind of came up with the name Unless Media. I sort of have div- do- sort of dove into the name before um, a few times. Unless Media basically comes from uh, Dr. Seuss and the Lorax uh. with the term unless and unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing's going to get better it's not oh cool um and I've, I've always loved that i've loved dr seuss growing up everything and it was my senior quote one of my favorite quotes ever and uh i don't know why but it always stuck with me and in the se- my senior year of college i had taken a class and in that class it was a- around consumer behavior um and we were talking about something and they had referenced that term unless and mm. with that same preface of unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing's going to get better it's not but around marketing and sales and business and everything. 
And for whatever reason, it had stuck with me so much. And so when I kept thinking of a name for my business, I just kept coming back to that. And so ultimately, I made it on less media. Um, and, you know, I was still doing it on the side, uh, social media management only at that time, still working full time also. And eventually, a couple months into it, I had just had enough with my full time job as well as taken on enough clients that I felt very comfortable um, quitting my job. So I did. Took my job, uh, took on less media full time, and now we're here, almost three years later, and I consider myself creative marketing studio. Awesome! <laughs> no, no, that's awesome. Um, you know, uh, side note: there's a lot of one fish, two fish happening um, in my house right now. I'm yeah, sure on the I'm Dr. Sure. Seuss trip. <laughs> um, so that's that's really interesting. I think you know, I think it really speaks to a lot of what I've seen in the last couple of years, at least, where. Um, for lack of a better term, like side hustle culture, mm -hmm. where it's like everybody's got a side hustle. And oh it's like God, if you yeah. spend any time on on like social media or like um like money Twitter yep. or yep. something like that, it's like don't quit your nine to five, just <laughs> yeah. build something on the side. My side hustle when I was, you know, working a nine to five was working on my rock band, trying to be yep. a rock star, yep. which obviously worked out really well. Um but <laughs> love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but great. the fact that you've been able to turn that into like a legit business mm -hmm. is great. What struck me the most was that you weren't just like you weren't just posting to social for like the sake of posting mm -hmm. the social. You were like really branding yourself mm -hmm. and by effect like branding your clients. Meaning things things that you do, you like post checklists of like what you're doing during the day. Or like when you're going to a client shoot, it's like you're you're kind of on top of mm -hmm. like really bringing the viewer or bringing the person who's like consuming your content like into the fold. And you're doing it really, really well, because I think the other thing that doesn't get talked about a lot is like, you know, nine to five life isn't for everybody. Like you said, mm -hmm. we've all done it for the most part. Like I did it for sure. You've done it. And it is a grind. And it's like, I think we're now at a point in time with enough tools at our disposal where it's like you really can do whatever you want if you can like put the pieces together it's not easy but all the tools are at your disposal um absolutely yeah. i when i started i was definitely in a very very privileged spot in life i you know right now i'm only 25 so when i started this i was only just about to turn 22 when i like really dove into it um no sorry about to turn 23 but i was young i was still you know fully living at home, fully basically relying on my parents for everything. And so I had just gotten out of college, just gotten into my job with the corporate life, worked, been working for eight months when I really hated it uh, or really had decided that I needed to figure out what to do next. So for one fold, yes, I was able to do it because I had built a client base freelancing and on the side of my nine to five where I felt comfortable enough. But ultimately, I also knew if all else failed, one, I have my degree to back me so I could theoretically get another job. It probably would take, obviously, time and effort, but I wasn't too worried about that. And then two, if I had to have some time where I was basically absolutely broke, I was still under the care of my parents. I wasn't like super nervous about that. So I had this like that effect that I know not everybody gets. Sure. So that is a huge thing when it comes to the whole, you know, quitting your nine to five for the side hustle. Um, but I also did have this, I guess, dream of this so much so. For years, you know, I had gone to college for marketing, didn't really know what I wanted to do with it because I always knew I didn't want to be definitely didn't want to be in sales, definitely didn't want to be in like the trade show life. And I always knew that the creative stuff was always something I was interested in, but there wasn't a ton of money in a lot of that. And, you know, they also always push you away from the arts, at least at that time of life when I was, you know, 18 back in 2016. Um, and and so thinking anything like that, I was just so overwhelmed and confused. Hence why I originally really dove into just getting a corporate job and just kind of going with it. Um, and I think if I hadn't done that and I started a business first, I don't think I would definitely, I don't think I'd be in the space that I'm in now only because I didn't have like that edge pushing me from being in the corporate life or the experience of having to sit in the corporate world. Yeah, totally. I mean, there's something to be said about um, figuring out what you don't want. Mm -hmm. I would have taken a year to myself between college and getting like a corporate mm -hmm. nine to five job because I grew up kind of raised and my my parents are wonderful but it was that mentality of like go to school go to college get a job with health insurance mm -hmm. you'll be all set work till you're 65 and then retire yep. uh if I had to do it all over again knowing what I know now I would have 
taken a year off Mm -hmm. from college just to like explore travel, Mm -hmm. like take in as much of the world as I could. Because like once you start going down a certain road, like it's hard to it's hard to make like big turns and like just, you know, especially now with like having a kid in a house and all this stuff. It's like I can't just at the drop of a hat say, hey, I'm going to go here and do this thing. So you have to like push it down the line a little Mm -hmm. bit. What's uh, what's like a typical day for you? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Like. Um, every day is so different, but also the same. So I guess it's more focused. Like if I have a day where it's, you know, focusing on working from my desk, from my computer, the day typically looks like me getting up in the morning, getting ready and now going to my office. Um, and I'll, you know, I answer emails. I make sure everything for my day for my clients are set. Obviously, I check in on everything message wise with them and make sure all their content scheduled, any emails that were scheduled went out correctly all those things. Um, And then I spend some time looking, I guess, towards my business and towards content. That's a big thing for 2024 I've been focused on. So lately that's been my, you know, 10, 11 o'clock situation where I spend a couple hours just like thinking about content, thinking about the next steps in my business, what I want to be doing. Um, Also like creating content that maybe I will use down the line, just especially now that I have this space for the last week, that's been like my big goal, just filming absolutely everything. Um, New office. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it's also exciting. Yeah. It's like that that new car. You want you want to just do everything. Um and but on days where I do content shoots, those are my favorite days because it, one, it's different than any other day. It's, you know, time wise or different. But I go and I get to actually introduce myself, introduce my work, meet with these business owners. And my longtime clients know this. With most of my businesses that I do social media, especially the local businesses, I am also and, and not just social media, emails or anything like that. I will come and do content shoots so that we have the content. We take, you know, the images of the products or of the team or of the space. We take a lot of videos for reels and just being able to also utilize in the future. Um, one of my favorites, and I post about them a lot, is Fruition. Um, oh, I yeah. get to, yes, they're they're amazing. Um, chocolate, right? Yeah, Fruition Chocolate Sweet. Works up in Shokan. Um, I I go and I go in and I get to just hang out with the baristas and the chocolatiers and the chocolate makers and all these random people that in my life I never would have been like. Like I, one, I would never understand how any of this works. Oh yeah. But I would never feel, I never thought I'd like be able to hang out with all these different people and just like see this process. And it's so cool. And we get to create really fun reels with the reels and videos of the chocolate and of the drink making and just of the shop and and of the owners and the team. And it's really fun. And I get to do this with all my all my businesses that I work with. A lot of those days are like why those are my why this industry is something I really love. It brings that creativity. Um, back on the table and it allows me to plan out future things for clients and get more inspired and it's just like full circle full circle yeah well variety is the spice of life right yeah. and and you know i don't do well with monotony and if mm-hmm. i have to do the same thing over and over and over again eventually i'm going to lose my mind and i know we kind of touched on this before we started recording it's like entrepreneurial things business focused things that kind of fall a little bit outside the creative scope or like run adjacent to mm-hmm. it it's like when you, first of all, how are clients finding mm-hmm. you or are you doing like outreach to clients or most people coming to you either from referral or just like what you're putting out on social media or out into the world? Mm-hmm. Like, how's that happening? Yeah. So a lot of it is referral based yeah. or, and not even just client side referrals where it's like my clients are telling friends or whatever, but it is also just friends of friends. Hey, my friend does this or whatever. Also, I've had um, in the past where I've just done the photography stuff with people and then they happen to start a business or had a business and now they are looking for social media. So it's a lot of returning clients from smaller services and things like that. Um, second with that is social media when I'm posting on Instagram specifically um, and then also LinkedIn as the second big one. Um, I'm getting clients that come to me and a lot of that's just through the DMs where they're like, hey, I always see your stuff. Like, I'd love to just set up a meeting and chat. Um, so I would say a couple, you know, I get a handful of client um, uh, interested people coming to me a month directly through my website. Um, but yeah, I, I, referrals are definitely the biggest and the best, especially when it's people coming from my clients, because I already know that I like them and that we align well. So the people they refer to me are most likely also people that I, I would love to work with. I think the biggest thing with cold outreach is I have found businesses even now that I will reach out to that I see often on social media. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want to be working with them in some matter. And I'll literally just DM them and be like, hey, I'm loving the content you're doing or I'm loving the work you're doing. I would love to sit down and talk with you. You know, even if it's just a chat about business, I I think that brings in a lot of, you know, good conversation. But it also allows, obviously, me to kind of 
give my service offers and everything, people have made uh, cold outreach this like negative thing. And I, yeah. I, do, I definitely disagree. And I'm one of them mm-hmm. in a in a past life that has been like, oh, I don't I don't want to sell stuff. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want to be a salesman. But the more time I spend like immersing myself in like actually running like a real business mm-hmm. and like finding new clients and things like that. It's like if you want look, this is for everybody listening. If you want to run a business, you have to sell something. Exactly. I mean, that's really just uh-huh. how that's really just how it goes. And when the right thing hits, like when you have the right conversation with the right person, there's it's it's not work. Yep. Do you do you want to do this thing or do you not? And it's either, like either the way, power it's fine. of the elevator pitch, you know, like yeah. having that like connection, being able to just share what you're selling without it feeling like this super annoying salesy thing but ultimately it is it's just a yes or no well totally and it's like you know because i've experienced this with you it's like and and i'm sure this has worked well for you in the past it's like when you get that referral and you get that first Mm -hmm. conversation well that's all you need is you need that foot in the door Mm -hmm. because like you're super easy to talk to and it's like i understand why you have a successful Mm -hmm. business is because like you know your shit (laughs) (laughs) but also like you know your shit and you're a personable person like a personable individual Mm -hmm. so i mean it's it's a win-win in that respect uh, so are you, I, I'm going to go even a, like a level deeper on mm-hmm. the business stuff and then we'll do yeah. something else. But, um, are you, are you all on retainer? Like, like, how are you structuring yes your client no. deals? Yeah. So, okay. So social media clients and the majority of like email clients or anything that is like a bigger, obviously more timelined project is retainer so if you have come to me and you're like hey this month i need content creation you know specifically because we're created this new product and we want some really good ugc and also some like product style photos and maybe some reels or whatever we'll set up content shoot days we'll do that and it's just that one day um and i had been doing it like that for my content creation because that was like my favorite thing i love i love taking the content and like creating the content and because i had started to do so well i started to roll that into monthly retainers so there Mm. are some clients that i've worked with on content monthly retainers where it's you know they'll pay a price and we'll have content shoots once a month or twice a month and then they can get all their content for socials or or, you know wherever they're using it um and so i build them that custom proposal everyone gets their own custom proposal i typically do it tiered you know smaller packages with basically everything i would recommend at least in this and then the next couple tiers are you know adding in some extra stuff for some more uh, emphasis and and that has definitely shaped a lot of what I've done because unlike a lot of marketing agencies, which will say, okay, here's package level number one, and this is what you get out of it. Yeah. And then package number two, and you know you can get higher ranking ones or whatever. I do it in a totally different way just because every business is so different. And you know it doesn't make sense for the, you know, the clothing brand to also be doing the same strategy and working in the same manner as the film studio or as in the barbershop or yeah. whoever you know everyone is so different that it it has to be customized well, and especially with social media yeah and there's been this big push at least in the last like two years i would say i'm trying to think I- i'm gonna go with two years mm-hmm. that i've been seeing like the big push for like productized services mm-hmm. which like in the right use case totally makes sense but to your point it's like because you have such a diverse client base it's like well what do you do like what are you supposed to say? Like, this is this is the cost and this is what you get. Mm-hmm. And it's not like you're not potentially servicing your client in the best way possible. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, being able to be flexible with how you service clients mm-hmm. based on their needs. I mean, it's ultimately more work for you. Yes. But it makes clients happier. It, it's more work yeah. for me. It definitely makes clients happier. But it also allows me to have back to what I was talking about earlier, where a less structured, you know, day where I'm able to do the things that I want and kind of like play around with it and every day is different um, because I'm, you know, okay, today is focused on client A and we're going to be doing a bunch of this stuff. Okay, tomorrow I'm shooting for these three clients and then I have a consultation meeting. So every day gets to be different. And I think if I was to only be doing, you know, one productized service and doing it the same way for every client, it would get so boring. When I think about my business, mm-hmm. right? I very quickly start to have like a panic attack over all the things that I need that I need to do. Yeah. So this year I'm really working on pushing the production studio, the creative studio, right? So it's like getting ducks in a row for that, mm-hmm. like, you know, SOPs and contracts and like all that back end oh, yeah. stuff, right? But then there's like 
finding actual work. Yep. And thankfully, it's a slow time of year for for like media production. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it breaks my brain mm -hmm. with how much stuff at, as a business owner, as a one person business, you have to take on. Well, that was a big reason why I like jumped at the opportunity for getting an office space because mm. I was originally working from home and I'd finish That's out hard. my day, you know, five or six o'clock and my brain wouldn't shut off. Yep. And I would be sitting there, my laptop, like staring at me in the corner and just like me, like mocking, me, making me feel like I need to just log back on and do stuff. Totally. And that's like one of the big reasons why I got the office space, which has already, you know, it's only been a real week that I've been working in there, but I, I've noticed a difference. But for the most part, the biggest thing I did in the beginning, and I'm really thankful I did, was set up kind of like systems. Mm. And I'm not saying that they're tied tightly. They're not like perfect at all. And I do change them and switch things up often. But I made sure in the beginning that I kind of started with the system. I have, you know, a CRM system. I use HoneyBook. Everything goes through there between, I, I create proposals customly through Canva. I have a Canva template that I use yep. and I go in and I create all the uh, templates for my proposals. But after that, when they choose a tier for the package, I send an official proposal for that tier. I send the contract and the initial invoice and then a recurring invoice all through HoneyBook. So it comes directly through there. They set everything up, sign, pay, it's done. Throughout our timeline that we're together, nothing else needs to get done in that so, like, system. So that's their, their portal, Their basically. portal, okay. exactly. And when I start with each of my clients, um, Forever, I've always used Google Drive as like our main headquarters for us to just drop everything in. I've tried a handful of other things. Working with small businesses, you got to give them the easiest option know, to know, <laughs> option totally. to work yeah, with. Yeah. So Google has definitely been helpful. They can put all their content in, all their branding elements. We put all our you know information, the contract, the welcome packet, everything that needs to be in there in that space as our headquarters. So I once I set that all up in the beginning of our process, I don't have to do anything else with that. It's all ready to go. Once I set it up once for each client, it's pretty much set and go. So client-wise, that's how it kind of handles. Personally, in business stuff, not the same. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a Notion set up for my business and I have my regular social media content calendar on there, but I ignore it 95% of the time because for me, most of the time when I'm posting something like a reel or even feed posts on social media for you know Instagram, I'll do it on the fly because something had sparked in my mind and I just had to create it at that point, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. And so I do it that way. So most of the time my content is not organized or not planned at all, which is like, you know, total do as I say, not as I do situation because um, I would not recommend it. But that's just what has been working for the last about a year for me is just not even planning it, just kind of going. And then for business stuff, I try and keep everything in Notion now that I have been using it. But beforehand, it was literally in jumbled up just in folders on my drive somewhere and I just was hoping for the best. Yeah. Um, business side, it's it's hard. It's really hard as this business owner, especially a business owner that's working that all the stuff that I need to organize for a business, the same stuff I have to work for clients because it's like you never have a break. There's no change. Totally. Like at least in like if I was to be owning like a candle shop, <laughs> I get to pay attention to the candle shop and then right. whatever. Like there's no there's no difference. You know, it's all the same work for well, both yeah. sides. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, I've done so much like like documentary and commercial work yep. and stuff like that it's like i want to and someday i'll do it like someday i'll make some some like passion project work mm -hmm. but it's like the for a long time i was like the last thing i want to do when i go home is you know think about making another thing or pick up yep. a camera and it's like you need you need that kind of separation so the fact that like for the last year mm -hmm. you don't really have a plan with your own yeah like like posting on social or whatever like cool yeah. i mean i'm into that yeah. like i haven't yeah. posted shit to instagram in my, ages in my personal so like yeah, my yeah. i'm talking about my business instagram here my personal instagram i have not yeah. even thought about it. i haven't even logged into it in like a year yeah, because yeah, yeah, i can't yeah, yeah, even yeah, yeah. think another step further totally. into social media uh, <laughs> i you were so speaking my language as mm -hmm. far as systems go though mm -hmm. big notion fan mm -hmm. um it's great. much to the, the chagrin best. of my wife who yeah. like the stress is out i love systems oh, like yeah. i love Love a good spreadsheet. Um, but I, I, I think it's really important. And I think that's, to your credit, something you tackled early. Mm -hmm. And I need, I'm like backing into it with like a bunch of years of not having great yeah. systems. And it's really hard for me. It's like yeah. really hard to not conceptualize mm -hmm. what I want. Oh, absolutely. I see. I know what you mean. Like, where but you, like put it into practice. Absolutely. Yeah. Execute it. Yeah. Um. For me, I am so not type A. I'm not organized. Yeah. I am. I have to force myself to be organized, which is so frustrating as a business owner. But I think that's also why I'm a business owner. I feel like the majority of people that get into this world 
are also the same way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, early on, starting with the systems has helped. And like I said, things have changed. I've definitely, you know, tightened things up. I've done better in the past. I've done things that I'm like, oh, I should maybe go back to doing it that way. But ultimately, the systems, you know, just finding what works. And I think, and I heard this on a podcast the other day, and it actually like made me really think. I always think there's got to be one way that all these business owners are doing it. Like they all, have, there's got to be something that makes it easier. I and think the I, same thing all the time. Like I'm yeah. just missing it. Yeah. And ultimately everyone just does things different. There's like, you have to find what works for you. Like you can ask probably 25 different business owners what it is that they're doing for their systems or to keeping things, you know, organized or to be able to actually survive being a business owner. And they're all going to tell you something different. You very quickly realize that everybody's literally just figuring it out as they go and they don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's actually really, that's been really helpful yeah. for me. Once you realize it's like you get better at a thing and you, and you, and you kind of like iterate and try things and mess up and then you do it again and you know, so on and so forth. So you, you get better and you streamline for yourself, but mm -hmm. like even people who are experienced in what they're doing, if they try a new thing, that's literally what they're doing. They're just trying it and seeing if it's going to work. Nobody really knows. Yeah, it's all trial and error and it's all learning from, you know, quote unquote failures. I don't necessarily believe in things being a failure, but those fails and those mistakes, learning from that has been like the only reason I'm where I am with business. Yeah. Because I just, again, I felt so secure in the beginning of my business, just under the, you know, if all else fails, I'm at least trying something creative and, you know, I got to just do it at this point. And because of that, I didn't really put a ton of, pressure i think on myself and so i just let myself just kind of jump for it and i think that's the best recommendation i would give any business owner is to just try it if you think something about doing something or thinking something might work or might not work just do it just try it and if it doesn't work you'll learn from that and you know you, you can ask 100 people what they recommend and you're going to get the different answer so if you think that something's going to work for you you got to just test it out i don't think anything's really a failure mm -hmm. whatever you said previously we'll we'll find it in the, in the edit. <laughs> But like specific to failure, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think anything's ever really a true failure, mm -hmm. but I think failure as like an as a verb, as an action mm -hmm. word, I think carries a lot of weight uh -huh. because it's oh, yeah. like all I've done for the last 10 years is like trip over myself, uh -huh. but you fail upwards. Yeah. You know, it's like you you try something, you mess up. If anybody's worried about uh failing daily, just have a kid. <laughs> And you will fail at something at least once uh, daily, but it's fine. It's totally fine, fine. It's all good. Because if you, as long as you keep them alive till the next day, <laughs> they just, they just then survive. there's no problem. <laughs> why, why local to the Hudson Valley? Like, why did you start building your situation here? Yeah. Um, as opposed to making a paradigm shift. If you, you know, you can unpack it for the audience i know a bit that you yeah. were like working up in albany and you mm -hmm. you kind of grew up around here mm -hmm. so why not do something totally different and just like shake it up a little bit why build locally in the hudson valley yeah i always knew that at some point in life i wanted to come back and live in the hudson valley it it just brings so much joy there's so much magic it's beautiful it's just an absolute beautiful place and growing up there was always like a stigma of having to get out because we were very much and it, it's still the same in some sense, but it definitely has changed a lot over, you know, the last five years, especially since COVID. Um, and I ultimately knew I wanted to get out so I could make the money I needed to. I wanted, you know, I had all these dreams and this luxurious life in my mind. I wanted to live in the city at one point, I wanted to move to L.A. at one point. There was a lot of things I wanted to do. But at the end of that, I always knew I wanted to come back here at least to live even if it was in my retirement age. Like at I knew this point. was at my spot. Life. Yeah, okay. It brings me a lot of inspiration. And COVID hit. I was in Albany with school, living up there, working up there. COVID hit and I moved back home. Um, and I was working remote, freelancing. I started working for a company in Woodstock as well for marketing. That's kind of like the big corporate job that really finished out, you know, what, I, what made me change into this uh, business life. And working in this area is so different than any other place because agreed it doesn't feel like real life it feels like we're in like a simulation and going to work around here it just so different um but ultimately i had gained a lot of connections and friends and also just people that i knew from growing up that were moving into the same kind of mindset with starting businesses or 
had family that were growing businesses and because of the trajectory of this area and what had become during COVID with so many people moving up here and really helping the economy and helping all these businesses grow even more, it allowed me to feel like this was a really good spot to start. Also, the arts are really big here, always have been, but anymore it's become so, so important for this area. And it is great. And I love that because that helps me obviously so much. And um, so when I started my business, I was kind of working both local with people I knew, but I also was taking on a lot of clients nationally just because of my social media account and that doing fairly well that people were finding me on there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I was working, you know, there was, I was working with an accounting office and a lawyer out in California. I was working with an insurance company in Texas. I was doing all these things mainly because they had came to me and I wanted the money. So I said, absolutely, I'll work with you. Um, But over the last years where that big switch happened, where I realized, you know, one, I don't want to necessarily be working with these people just wasn't my drive. It also just wasn't something I wanted to be doing where I was just sitting remotely. They'd send me the content. I had to organize it, do whatever, send it back to them, get it approved, make it go live. For me, I wanted that more connection and that that creativity and that actually being able to do the work in person or whatever. And so I started utilizing my network, utilizing the clients I had here. I began a referral program or referral concept with my clients where I let them know, hey, you get 10% off the month if you you know, send me a uh, a client that is going to do a discovery call me, whatever. That's super smart. Yeah. And it definitely, that definitely uh, jump started a lot with the local area. Um, but because of that, and you know, this goal here of kind of being creative and being able to actually work with businesses, it has definitely led me to realize how much is in this space and in this area here that I didn't even know. Like there's so many businesses that I work with or that I connect with just even on Instagram or on you know, TikTok or wherever that is around here and they have been here for years or maybe they're brand new, but I had never heard of them. Yeah. And that's, I guess, ultimately why I wanted to stay local and work with local businesses, at least predominantly. It's also definitely helped me structure my business. Like I said in the beginning, I didn't want to be an agency and I still don't. So that's kind of where I went with the studio yeah, term. Yeah, same. I uh, feel that. Uh-huh. And in doing so, I think that's also allowed me to be more comfortable being like, yeah, this local area is where I want to work because if I don't want to scale to this crazy size with hundreds of employees, that's not something I think will ever be my goal. And maybe at some point it will, but at the moment, and since I started, that hasn't been the goal. My goal is to be the person that gets to work with these business owners and actually creates the content and gets to do the magical stuff. Um, I feel like I just get more comfortable and feel more inspired and creative doing that here than just working again like I did when I was just getting clients that you know were out in Texas or in California and they would send me the content and I just kind of did everything on my computer in the dark and sent it to them got it all ready to go while yes that yielded you know money and quick flow and I could probably scale on that it just wasn't it wasn't at all what I wanted and yeah. you know being able to do what I do and do it in my hometown is also you know so exciting and also so fun saying like like planting your flag it's like this is where i'm going to be i'm going to be local Mm -hmm. i I want that interaction like you specifically want the interaction with the clients but you know on on putting the client hat on for a second i'm sure your clients are you know feel more connected Mm -hmm. to you um personally and professionally and i'm i'm sure that doesn't hurt absolutely in the long run absolutely yeah it's definitely something i've you know they have mentioned to me and also i can just tell you know it feels a little bit better but it also is something where they can feel like, and I guess in a way, it's a great thing to have all these, you know, there's so many new business owners coming in here and that's amazing. And I think one thing that they always feel is that there's no connection. They they don't know anything or they don't know a lot about the local area. Yeah, totally. So working with somebody who has that knowledge and that experience and lived here and understands, you know, the tourists and the clientele and all that stuff that comes along with marketing a local business or even just a business that is founded within a certain area knowing all that information is really great and i think that's another thing that has helped me kind of defer- diversify myself versus like the bigger companies that might be out of the city or out of albany that are coming and kind of poaching clients or poaching small businesses and giving them those you know really basic packages of we're going to do this here and then they schedule all the content and they never talk to them again and then you know the next month comes around they schedule all the content they don't talk to them it's a lot easier being an individual that is from here and that works with them on a more personal basis than if I was to just be, you know, behind a computer screen or traveling once a month to them and never, you know, otherwise talking to them. Yeah, totally. I think it gives you a leg up. It seems like you're always super busy. Mm-hmm. So like are you getting to the point where it's like 
it needs to be more than just you at some point? Yes and no. Okay. Um, so I have been very mindful of the amount of clients or the work I take on. I kind of have gotten to know where my breaking point is. But my my big thing is that, you know, again, with the whole no agency thing and being more of the studio base, if I bring people on, I want them to be more experts in a specific thing. I don't want them to be account managers or, you know, a social media manager that holds works with three of my clients yeah. while I oversee stuff. Instead, I would want, you know, a copywriter or a videographer, an editor, somewhere, someone that has that specialty that can work more on a collaborative and fun basis with our clients and with me also present in the work. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's no longer my business, but it also just doesn't take away from you know, me being able to enjoy it. Because again, this was like that passion project, that creativity yeah. out creative outlet that I needed. Yeah. It's interesting because I feel like I feel like I just listened to this like today or yesterday. It's like some bigger person in like the creator space mm -hmm. was like giving some advice. Literally the opposite of you. I'm not saying it's <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah, saying it's yeah. right or wrong. But they're they're like, oh, you should like it's probably better to look for a generalist, mm -hmm. right? Someone who can like be a general manager of the business or whatever. But it depends. It depends on your on your situation. Mm -hmm. And I mean this in the most mm -hmm. positive, respectful way. Like you are the generalist yeah. of your business yep. in the best way possible because mm -hmm. you wear all the hats and you have all the client mm -hmm. relationships and all that other stuff. So I think in your situation, it does actually make sense to be like, OK, what is the biggest like regular time suck that mm -hmm. every client needs this thing yep. that eats up X amount of time like I can't like devote my energy to growing or something else mm -hmm. because this is the thing that for every client eats up time yeah. that I could farm out to somebody. I mean, it totally makes sense. I think, and and to, to the point of what you're saying that creator had said, I do see where it can make sense in a lot of cases for that generalist position. But I think one, it's taking a risk that I don't want to take on my business yeah. because you never know. And not saying that taking risks are bad, obviously that take all the risks, but it's just not something I'm looking for, I guess. But it's also the fact that in a lot of those cases, those business owners have then stepped away from the actual business and are doing the more CEO stuff. And yeah. that's not me. I don't. Yeah. That's not me. And so I am. Yeah. Like you're saying, I, I like the fact that I am more the generalist. I am wearing the, the hats. And also, I think in order to make my clients as successful as possible and offer my services in the most, you know, in the way that's going to bring in the most return. Um, will be having those specialists where I can say, hey, I'm going to increase my rates potentially in this aspect because we have someone dedicated to this and this is going to be, you know, more streamlined and it's going to be better and, you know, whatever. As I see that that becomes a, you know, uh, more organized and a higher ticket price, I can do that. But when I hire someone that is just like that assistant that's running around doing all the little pieces that I don't want to do, it's not really going to be doing much, but potentially making more work for myself with yeah. having to like, okay, can you do this now? Oh, okay, now next, can we do this? And then I need this done today. What's your, what's your client load up to mm -hmm. now? Like how many clients do you yeah. have? R on like retainer. Regular, like regular, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on retainer. Regular, yeah, sure. So yeah, five, six, six like retainer clients monthly, but they're all different sizes. So I have two that I would say are my large, big clients. And not that I give them any more love than any of the other clients. But they just, I have more work that I do for them. And then I have two smaller clients that still great, still love them, still do a lot. Um, and then I have two clients that are kind of like, one is, you know, a smaller package and I can basically get all that work done in a week for the month and then it be ready to go and I don't have to do much else. Um, obviously, I'm still conversing with them and we're still thinking things out and planning out strategies, but it's not a huge time suck. And that's one thing that I think with my custom packages and doing it the way I've done has helped me so much because it has allowed me to figure out one who I want to work with versus who I yeah. don't want to work with and also balance my months out where it can be like this where I know okay I can take another client on because I'm still working with you know these clients but two of them are smaller so I can bring on another smaller client and it allows me to kind of fit into that puzzle um but it's also only the people that I like to work with so if I feel like okay I don't want to work with a client I don't ever you know once the contract's up or if for some reason you know, something happened where I've terminated the contract, which I have done before. Sure. Um, I don't ever feel like, oh my gosh, I'm losing money or I'm, I'm not doing something right because I'm able to kind of max out with other services that are like more of my a la carte services, the one-on-one -on -one yeah. services. Um, so it, it's, it's hard to say, I guess, my, my current client load specifically, just because some months I do do like 
the content count or content shoots with clients where it is like three or four clients that are just doing photo shoots a month on top of them while other months they don't have any. So it's really all dependent. I've been lucky enough to keep the majority of my clients for so long that I have been able to, you know, I understand, okay, it's definitely going to take this much time to do their content calendar for the month. And I definitely need to get in contact that, with them on this day in order for it to all be approved on this day. Like I have that kind of now wrap where I map out my month. If I'm looking at it at the end of one month, I can look at the, the following month and map out exactly how long something's going to take or when certain things need to be done on like a calendar view. And that has also helped me a lot. I know it definitely is also dependent on the service. So like because what I'm doing is every month after month, it's basically the exact same service I'm providing for them. So the same amount of content, the same amount of days that I'm going to be doing the community engagement, the same amount of content shoots per client. I'm able to do that. While if I was a service like you, I'm sure where you're taking on retainer clients, but your monthly efforts are going to be different where you're editing bigger stuff or smaller things, it's going to be so different. So I'm definitely in a unique position and what I do, you know, offers me that flexibility because I already know ahead of time what's going to, you know, be done, have to be done. Yeah. You know, for this starting as like a side hustle Mm -hmm. and you just kind of like figuring it out as you go, uh, it sounds to me like you got a lot of stuff figured out. Like you're really like, uh, (laughs) the internet is your best friend. The internet's your best friend. Everything I found is basically all through YouTube and and Instagram Well, but that's going back to what we said. It's like the answers Mm -hmm. are simple. It's mm-hmm. not easy. Like you have to put in the work and the yeah. time and the dedication, but like everything yeah. is available to you. And I think yep. you've like really made the most of it. What's yeah. like, what's next for yeah. Unless Media? So for one, I got the office space. That was yep. big. Two, things like this where I'm going, I want to put myself out there more. I'm so afraid of, you know, talking and Everybody so afraid is. of everything. Everybody and is. Oh yeah. And I, that, that makes me feel really I good. I do. Like, I, I, you know. And I feel like coming from a social media world where I'm seeing how quote unquote perfect everyone's life is and everything that they're doing, everyone's business is. It's really disheartening when you yourself doesn't feel that way. And you have to remind yourself, obviously, social media is fake and yeah, what they're course. putting out there it's isn't curated. real. It's 100%. all curated. Um, and so this is like a big thing I want to be doing more of this year is, you know, the podcast or even talking, you know, maybe having speaking events or having classes and workshops. I think that would be really great. I have talked to a few people that I know um, in the area where, you know, the potential of putting out a workshop for either marketing for small businesses or even just like some more fun one on one things with local businesses. Um, but another big thing is my content shoots that I'm starting and hoping to really ramp up this year is allowing myself to maybe take on less big retainer workload and do more of that creative side of things, mm. because that's really where I found how, much, you know, my love for all of this. So more of the content creation, more of the con- consulting side of it um, is this is my goal for this year is cool. kind of growing there, but also the personal branding. And that's I know on Instagram, it seems like that's all buttoned up and I am happy with how I'm doing on there and how I've always been with my personal brand. But I do want to grow into maybe more of like a stronger speaking personal brand. So working on growing on LinkedIn, working on potentially starting on TikTok, which I'm terrified about, but yeah. we're going to get there. And things like that. I've also thought about YouTube channels. So just like kind of figuring out that next step personally that's going to be able to benefit my business. I think that's a really cool space for you to grow into because, yeah. right, you're doing, you know, everything you're doing with Unless Media, mm-hmm. but it's also, you know, contributed to like growing you as a as a business owner. Absolutely. And like every time you and I have chatted, it's like I always leave it being mm-hmm. like she totally kn- like she knows her shit, <laughs> you know. More so than a lot of people I've mm-hmm. talked to yeah. who like have no clue. Yeah. yeah. And I think and I think that it also just comes across in a good way. Almost like I, I know what I'm talking about. And I and I do. I do feel like I know what I'm talking about for sure. I, I've done a lot to like get to where I am. But I also think that a lot of it comes from being so stuck in a social media mindset so often that I have basically like verbally or mentally memorized like how I want certain things or done things and I think it's helped me a lot with growing my business because I'll like see somebody say oh you need to do it this way and then I'll always think about it and I'll like be looking at what my plans are or what somebody else did and I kind of like compare it and it's always just like running in my mind and as any business owner it's always turning but in some way I think that that has been I guess the biggest developer for me is just like consistently 
thinking and as what much as it's hurt my head mentally oh, yeah. it, it definitely has also helped like i you know i'm sure i've said it on one of these episodes mm-hmm. or a few of these episodes in the past and you can ask anybody like i'm close with like it, it is my downfall mm-hmm. it's like i i unintentionally but consistently like do the comparison game oh my gosh all the um, time even when i'm even when i'm not aware of it and it's just like so it's so crippling for your like yep. self confidence um, that it's actually taken wor- like this is my Everest in 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 a lot of respects where it's like me not giving a shit about anybody else is is hard and kind of mm-hmm. an uphill battle. And I read something in a book not too long ago. Um, it's this book, Ten X is is greater than Two X. It's like about business okay. growth. Yeah, and there's this section that's like kind of excerpt excerpt from a larger book by the same author talking about the gap in the game Mm -hmm. and and the idea being is the gap is where you know you're here and you want to get to here but all you see is like what everybody else is doing and what you're not doing and that's the gap right but if you live in the gain which is you're here and here's where you were and look at everything you've accomplished and the only Thing you have to compare yourself against is yourself then it's like it, it the point is, is like this positive mindset yeah, shift. i love that perspective and it's, it's a cool perspective maybe it's like not the right th- like i wouldn't say it <laughs> that way but the way it was explained made a lot of sense yeah and it's like trying to keep that in the back of my head because constantly i'm just like well i, I i'm not doing that oh i know. You know oh yeah i am the same way i am constantly comparing myself in the worst part is because of on social media for my business and a big portion of my business does rely on social media i am always seeing what other people in my same industry are doing and you know i i for example literally like a couple weeks ago i saw a business who i had like noticed start growing in the past year and now they have just hired like their fifth employee and it like brought me down because i was like okay they're growing And it's like, how are they doing that so fast? They're doing it. They're higher than me in this industry. Like they're doing more. And it brought me into this like really like mindset twist, you know, where it's like you're just sitting in the dark, just like staring like, oh, my God, I'm failing. Yeah. And I that was a huge part of what happened last year throughout 2023. I think that happened way too much for me. And that like held me back because I kept like I'd like move forwards on something and then I would get dragged back down and then I'd move forwards. And it was so disheartening because. I didn't realize what was happening, but at the end of the day, I, you know, coming into 2024 and I started to think about, you know, what I want different from what I was doing last year, coming back to the idea of all the comparison I did caused so much of my issues and so much of that, you know, that deep dive downfall. And one thing that I've recently started to really understand is one, everyone's on their own, you know, path. You're in your own, your own life and everyone's going to be doing something different. You know, your outcome is going to be different than theirs. And even if you want it to be the same outcome, everyone's way of getting there is going to be different. That's just how life is. And that's a be- the beauty of it. You know, if everyone was doing the same thing, it would be so boring. Totally. But one of the big things I also had noticed was everyone's life before their business was something different. Yeah. That person who had this is growing this business in one year and already has five employees, not saying anything bad about it, but they're just in a different state of life. So they were originally, and I had done the deep dive to find this out, originally, a stay-at-home wife. They didn't have any kids and they were able to just live off of their husband's income. And they had started a handful of businesses beforehand, which was amazing, but they were just kind of like playing around. And so they were building a business out of this passion project and being able to just have the experience and the money and they had the connections already. And they were just like, let's just do it. And I'll invest everything the business makes right back into the business. And they had that freedom. Not everyone has that, uh, sure. that opportunity. And same for when it comes to growing in different industries or in different niches, I guess, within the social media world, you're working with so many different types of industries that there are some people that only do social media for the beauty industry, while others do social media only for lawyers or or for fashion or whatever it might be. And every industry is so different that you're going to be growing differently. You're going to, you know, be working heavier loads if you're working with startup tech companies because they are on such a different playing field than if you're to be working with, you know, the, the hardware store down the road. There's so many differences that when you really look at it, you have to give yourself so much grace because, again, every path is different. Everything that is happening 
is your own and and not everyone's going to be able to build the same thing because your life is different yeah i mean i think that's a really strong spot to start to wrap things up <laughs> uh so as we wind things down that's great mm -hmm. i i really appreciate all that as we start to wind things down uh just a couple of like yeah. more rapid fire stuff so if in your professional opinion if someone's looking to grow their small business kind mm -hmm. of industry agnostic right yeah. they're starting from the ground floor and they're yeah. trying to grow their small business what's like one or two actionable things mm -hmm. they can do like right now the first thing is create your foundation of where you're going to be selling a product or your service or whatever it is so if it's your website build your website out to be the best it can be the better it is for user experience the better all your other marketing pieces are going to fall into play so for example if you were to be relying on social media for sales or increasing you know your leads or whatever and they come from social media to your website and they can't figure out how anything works your website's not working it's down they can't they don't know where to find what they're looking for you're not going to be getting the same you know results or the same return that someone that has that perfect uh, foundation or that perfect place is so always making sure that that first piece or that I guess bottom of the funnel um, piece is going to be as pristine as possible uh, and then next building out your social media in a way that is super authentic and unique to you and your business anymore it's just trend after trend after trend yeah. copying the same person the same type of idea same thing every day that we see on social media i spend a lot of time thinking about this uh -huh. yeah. and it is so hard one it's impossible to grow i mean it's not impossible but it's, it's harder to grow when you're doing the same thing as everybody else because you're going to get overlooked and you're also going to be the per the account where you have a viral video a video go viral or a, a, a carousel got on the explore page and you got a ton of likes and that's great but it's only for that content because it's not for you. So then they're, they're going to come to your page. Maybe they'll follow you for a time being, but they might unfollow you later. They're never going to see your stuff and interact because you're not their ideal. Uh, they're not who you're looking for and they're not your ideal client. And so you'd want to build it super authentic to you to one stand out, but so that you're actually reaching the people that you want to sell to or the people that are interested in your business and your services. Why else would you want to do it? It gets to the point where so many businesses on Instagram or on TikTok are just doing trend after trend after trend yeah. or just trying to like compete in some non-existent competition that they mess up their algorithm, quote unquote. And I, we all hate we all hate having to compete with Slave that and figure that out. Yeah. But they mess that up. They mess up the whole concept of their branding and their messaging. You have to be that you have to keep that authenticity and you have to really build off of your brand in a way that it's going to bring people back and that loyalty and that recognition because without any of that you're never going to get that piece of that sales so just stay authentic be unique be as original with your content but also strategic very strategic always have an end goal for you know what you're doing online yeah yeah my next question was going to be I i'm going to assume that some of this kind of ports over to my next question was like, what if somebody wants to grow like a personal brand? Mm -hmm. What's something yeah. they can do to start right now? Yeah. First, build out a strategy that kind of looks at where you want to be with this personal brand. Maybe that's your goals and all that. Look at your competitors and then find your target audience. So obviously a personal brand, while it is about you, there still is a target audience who that ideal audience that you want to be fo having following you and they want to be you know, following you, you're the person that they want to follow. You want to build your personal brand out, still authentic and still very unique to you, but in a way that strikes thought, I guess, and like really <laughs> brings on the questions. And that we see that so much on TikTok, where certain creators they build their brand off of controversy or they build their brand off of you know unpopular opinion, but and they like will say things. Not a great look. <clears throat> yeah, and it it. it might work for the time being, but again, they're then stuck in that bubble. They have to be consistently doing that. And same goes for, you know, people that want to start brand, start their own personal brand, but they only do it based on one topic or they're like building really hard into a niche like cooking. And then all of a sudden they don't want to do cooking anymore. So you want to get super nitty gritty with your strategy first and where you're going. Be authentic and find a way to break through and diversify yourself in the industry that you're looking for 
and who your audience is and just connect with them. Allow them to feel like you're their friend. Building that personal brand comes two ways, comes from you giving off this, you know, your personality online and everything. But it also comes from you with that connection because you want to make it feel like they're going to comment on your post or they're going to share your stuff and you're going to react to it. You're going to notice it. And if you don't, they're going to, you know, at some point go away. They're not going to always be there if you're not going to give them that that quality of, uh, I guess, res- respect in a way or like that connection. Um, just building off of all of that with like your community and everything. Staying really true to yourself is ultimately. Yeah, I think the name of the game across the board here seems like authenticity. Yeah. 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 And, I, and the big thing I would say for anyone, personal brand or business, especially with, you know, the name of the game with authenticity would be to find one thing that works for you. And that could be coming, go through testing, you know, share a bunch of different kinds of content or create a bunch of different kinds of content yeah, and iterate. just figure it out. Yeah. Find what works and do it again and again and again. And in doing so, you're going to, one, learn so much about your audience. You're going to then get all the questions. You're going to get all the things from them and you'll be able to then create more content. But you'll also then be able to see where you really stand and how you want to move forward. And that's obviously the biggest piece because so many people will get to the point where they have this brand, but they don't know what to do next because they haven't done looking at looked at all the things. They haven't followed the analytics or looked at just their strategy and and then they get stuck. Yeah, right on. Okay, last real interview mm-hmm. question. Uh, if someone finds themselves in the Hudson Valley, mm-hmm. uh, what should they do for a good time? Ooh, oh my gosh, that's so there's hard. Lots, I there's know, there's so lots of much. There's lots of, okay, okay, okay. So it wait, wait, depends wait. on who they are or like where what they're looking okay, for. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's. So we're doing this interview in yep. February, but it's going to maybe be a little bit till it comes out. So let's mm-hmm. let's whittle it down. They find themselves in the mid Hudson Valley mm-hmm. where we are now, yep. in the springtime. Okay, what should they do for fun? In the springtime, flower picking. Flower picking. Flower picking. There is so many beautiful flower farms. I. And I don't know if it's brand new or I just am living under a rock, <laughs> but over the last year, I've found there are so many amazing farms that do flower picking. And I think it really is a super big contestant to just this area and like the history of this area, like going to the farm, like growing up, it was all farmland. Um, and I think that's the big thing that would be so unique. So flower picking, big, but also hiking, of course, hiking the falls in the fall would be the best time. And my biggest recommendation for that season is like, the fall because it's so beautiful but any time of year hiking the catskills uh down in bear mountain all of the above is just it's beautiful right on i mean you know we're local so mm-hmm. gotta give a little local yeah. local but love uptown kingston that's that's a great spot to be oh uptown kingston has some <laughs> stuff going on for sure um cool so where uh can people i know we've been like yeah, saying yeah. it all the time But where definitively can Mm -hmm. people find you online if they want to learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, so my website would probably be the best place to start. Um, It's just unlessmedia.com. And then my Instagram would be the next place, unlessmedia. But it has two eyes for my Instagram. And that's just because Instagram is annoying. (laughs) Totally. I feel Uh, that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll put all that in the the show notes. But Mm -hmm. Taylor, thank you so much for being here. This is super fun. I'm glad we could finally do it. Me too. Me too. It's been awesome. All right, everybody, that was my interview with Taylor from Unless Media. And if you're working for yourself or running your own business, I hope you have some really great takeaways from today's interview. I'm going to link to all of her stuff in the show notes for this episode. But if you can find her on Instagram, it's Unless Media with two eyes in the name. And I think a follow or just some engagement with her would really go a long way. She really knows what she's doing. As always, a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to the show really helps us out. If you're watching this on YouTube, a thumbs up or a subscribe is also great. You can find out more about the show at nosetpathpodcast.com or on Instagram at nosetpathpodcast. I'm your host, Drew English. You can find me at drewenglish.com or Drew English with two H's at the end on Instagram. And be sure to check out my creative media studio, Lights and Years. That's lightsandears.com and lightsandears on Instagram. Okay, folks, that'll do it. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.